joy it is to be here this morning. In the name of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Medically speaking, the last time that I was in the hospital should have been my last go around. I should have been gone a long while ago. But there's a verse of scripture over in the book of 1 Peter that tells us a little story. And I know that you have read it, but I'd like to share it with you. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle again. A few years ago, we all at times, <clears throat> I heard a little testimony this morning to Miss Lois about a friend of hers. But a few years ago, there came a time in my life because of the hurts, the sufferings, and the pains that I was going through, I had come to the point to where that I had made plans within my life. Brother Jerry, this will be getting to what you were talking about in Sunday school this morning. I had made plans down to the very detail on how I was going to get rid of the sufferings and the pains and that was to take my own life. Well, one day I was reading. Over in the book of Second Corinthians, if you want to turn there with me, chapter 12. I think sometimes we all have a tendency to, when we get sick, to feel sorry for ourselves, to wallow in our weakness, And sometimes we even blame God. But in the 12th chapter of Second Corinthians, we find a man by the name of Paul. And I believe that it was Paul that went to the third heaven, saw things there and heard things there that it was literally unlawful to be spoken back here on earth. Now we hear of these things today, how that people has, has passed on, that, that is the spirit has left the body, and they've seen the light. And we hear a lot about that today. But back then, it wasn't so. And so Paul, to keep him from just literally going overboard, was given a thorn in the flesh. Now, we don't know what type of thorn this was, but I believe that this thorn this morning is a thorn that every one of us can get. And some do. There are those that God gives permission unto Satan that will cause a thorn in our lives. But there are also times whenever God puts the thorn there. You remember the story how the man that was at the, at the well was wanting to go into the well. 
because he had an infirmity. He couldn't get down there fast enough to get in. So Jesus and his disciples came by and they seen him. And his disciples asked a question. Lord, who did sin, this man or his parents? And Jesus says, neither one. Neither one. He says, this was done that the glory of God would be manifested. And so I read this portion of Scripture here back then. And in verse 7, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And this thing I saw, I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And oh, how many times. How many times I have knelt and you, and you said, Lord, just take this away. Take it away. For what would come back would be my grace is sufficient for you. And so because of that then, Paul says most gladly, therefore, most gladly. No more self-pity. No more wallowing in our weaknesses. But Paul says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that, I, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So we need not give up because God is still in control. And we have a Heavenly Father this morning, beloved, that we can go to and we can walk up boldly before the throne of grace and pour out our souls unto Him. And if we believe that He hears us, we shall have the petitions that we ask for. This morning, we look at the cross. We see Jesus did the same thing. Pretty much so as Paul did, as all of us do. There in the garden, he says, Lord, he says, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But he says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And on that cross that day, our Savior hung there. And he asked the question, why? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, I want to share this morning with you. Even though our Lord suffered, his body was literally broken on the cross for you and me. His blood was shed there for you and me. And that blood is still just as powerful right now as it was 2,000 years ago. In fact, to best it, it goes all the way back before the foundation of the world because the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. But there's something else about Jesus that we miss out on on the cross. Whenever he says, my God, my God, why 
Hast thou forsaken me? I don't believe that Jesus was asking his father in a doubtful way. Because if you go to the 17th chapter of the book of John, you find there the heart and soul of our Lord Jesus Christ. The intercessory prayer that he prayed First for himself, secondly for his disciples, and thirdly for us. Why did he do that? Why did he do that? Turn over with me, if you would, to the 24th, 23rd verse of John chapter 17. I want to read you something. And listen very carefully to it. In verses 1 through 5, our Lord prays for himself. In verses 5 through 19, our Lord prays for his disciples. But in verses 20 through 26, he prays for all of us. In verse 13, he talks about the joy, his joy being fulfilled in us. But in verse 23, I find the reason, a glorious reason, why we shouldn't give up. When sickness comes our way, we should look up and say, Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to suffer a little bit. Why? I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. And if this next phrase wasn't here, I wouldn't have believed it. And hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Back yonder in the eons of ages, the God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit agreed together that his son would come and offer himself upon that cross. But before he could do that, our father had to love us as much as he loved his son to put him there. And he loved his son as much as he loved us so he could give his life for us. Christ joyed in the cross. When he went to that cross, sure, he, he cried out. But he seen why he knew how, why he was there. He knew what he was going to accomplish and he knew what the results of it was going to be. And so in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, the Bible tells us that he was joyed in the cross. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Beloved, it makes no difference what our bodies get down with. We have a heavenly Father that loves us enough to take care of us. It makes no difference whether it's through sickness or health 
He takes care of us. And I want to tell you something this morning. That's what I want to do. Paul gloried in the cross. He says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10, or 14 rather, he says, God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of Christ. We like to boast a lot of times. But boasting gets us nowhere. I'm so glad today. I'm so glad this morning that I can be able to say as Paul did, I do glory in the cross because I know when my Savior went to that cross, He suffered, He died, He bled. So what gives us the right to not want to suffer? For Him. That verse of Scripture over there in, in 1 Peter chapter 5 where it talked about being suffering for a little while has two meanings to it. The physical suffering that we go and encounter and go through day by day, but then there's the spiritual suffering that we encounter. But when I read where my Lord joyed, in the cross. He gloried in the cross. Then that's what you and I should be saying unto him. Thank you, Lord, for this pain. Thank you for this agony. Thank you for this suffering. Because he not only knows our infirmities. But beloved, he feels every bit of it. He formed us out of nothing. Put us in a pouch and brought us into this world. Why? To serve him. To glorify him. And there's times in our lives when things takes place that causes us to stumble. But God is right there. Our precious Lord Jesus Christ is there with that hand reaching out. Take my hand and follow me. Sure, it's hard when your body is racked with pain. It's hard whenever you're sitting and every breath that you take felt like it would be the last one. Even the oxygen at times wouldn't do me much good. Even the breathing treatments wouldn't do me much good. I would have to go and get breathing shots. But glory be unto God. His grace is sufficient for you and for me. And we can lift our voices up unto Him and give him the praise and the honor and the glory. Beloved, it wasn't anything that I've done that causes this. This is all of God. I'm not bragging not one bit. No, but I give God. I give our Heavenly Father. I give my majesty the honor and the glory and the praise because he's the one 
that gives life to us. He's the one that gives breath in our bodies. He can slow it down or he can make it fast. He gives us doctors, but they can only do so much, but they don't have any control over life. That belongs to God. And friend, this morning, I say the same thing to you. Jesus has the keys to life and death. Let me ask you this question this morning. Can you truthfully say in your heart that I glory in the cross? Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the infirmities, I want to glory in the cross. Do you do that? I might get knocked down before the night it gets here. I don't know. But you know what? I want to glory in the cross of Christ. I want to give him the glory. Why? Because when he was hanging on that tree and the blood that he shed there for me, he applied it to my soul. And he made it possible for me to have eternal life. So why shouldn't we glory in Christ? He gives unto us eternal life. No man is able to pluck us out of his hand. And so when I know then when, that I, when I'm on that bed and this last go around in the hospital, I thought it was my last go around. But I want to tell you something. I weren't afraid. I weren't scared because I knew that my Heavenly Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, is right there. You see, beloved, the Trinity, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit dwells within us through the Holy Spirit. And Paul says that he yearned within himself to depart from this physical body to go home to be with the Lord. Our heart's prayer is and ought to be, even so come, Lord Jesus. I know this morning, I know that I know if right now God took the life away my soul would be at home with him. Can you say that this morning? Can you earnestly and truly and honestly say that if I was to die right now, I know I'd go home to be with the Lord. If you can't say that this morning, Won't you come to Christ? He'll fix it. He'll take that old dead soul, that soul that's dead in trespasses and sin, and he'll bring it alive. He'll give you eternal life if you trust him. He says today is the day of salvation. Today is the accepted time. Don't put it off any longer. Brother Shelby, come, if you will, please. Let Christ be the Lord of your life. Let Him be the Lord of your life. If you don't have Christians, if you don't have that joy and that peace, and that happiness that passeth all understanding. Do as the psalmist says. Go to him and say, Lord, 
restore unto me the joys of your salvation. For you see, it's his salvation, it's not ours. We partook of it, but he was the one that went to the cross for us. So whatever your reason is this morning, I pray that you'll make that decision for Christ.